Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to review all the videos published in September 2018. Let's begin. So, September started off with the conclusion of the task system in Battle Royale Tycoon. This series is focused on making a system where you can create tasks to do various things and workers to execute them when possible. The video this month concluded the series by creating two different systems working in tandem. Each system has its own different task types and the workers execute them differently. One system is responsible for grabbing items from the floor and placing them in an item slot. The other system grabs items from the slots and sends them away. Each system is completely independent of the other. This concludes the task system as is used in Battle Royale Tycoon. I hope you'll learn something and find a use for it in your own games. Then there was a very beginner focused video covering what is a component and how it relates to model behavior. I've done several beginner focused videos covering the basics of Unity, so if you're new, check out the Unity Basics playlist. Also started a new series making Spider-Man in Unity 2D. I've been playing the game on the PS4 and it does a lot of things very well, so in this series we're going to recreate as much as possible using 2D. The series started as much from scratch as possible, the only things already prepared were the animations and the sprites. So first we had to deal with basic movement and attacks for Spider-Man. Then we spawned some enemies and had the ability to attack them. Once we could attack the enemies we implemented a health system to be able to kill them. So now the last basic thing we need to add is a simple enemy movement and then we can move on to Spider-Man specific abilities. This series is continuing in October and I'm really looking forward to seeing how many different abilities we can recreate. Then we had two videos covering saving and loading in different ways. First, simply saving into a file using our own custom file format. This is not necessarily the best approach to take, but it teaches you how to separate data. Then we use JSON, which is already a very robust format to store our save files. The previous month had a video covering what is JSON, so in here we simply took the file saving and used JSON to create a very simple but very robust save system. We also completed the simple resource gatherer AI series. In this series we created from scratch a nice little AI that can gather resources of various types and then use those resources to construct a tower which in turn spawns more gatherers. It's a great series to watch if you're interested in how you could create a game like Age of Empires. So we had a video on resource regeneration, so we could grab an infinite amount of resources but with a logic dictating how they would regenerate. And in the final video we used the resources gathered to construct a tower. After being built the tower spawns a new gatherer which can be used to gather more resources and so on. There was one more video continuing the create a graph series. So far in this series we have created a very robust graph that can be easily modified to display any data. In this particular video we added some buttons and some code to be able to modify certain parts of our graph like manually change the visual type and string representation. Then a video on a simple element that is useful in many different game types which is a minimap. The first video covered setting up and creating the minimap. We created a camera, added the minimap to the UI with a nice border on top and some icons for the various elements. Then a second video where we set up several classes to be able to manage our entire minimap system in several ways through code. Also two videos on how to create a level by drawing pixels into a texture. This is an interesting technique that can be useful depending on how your game is set up. The first video covered how to read a texture and read each pixel in that texture. And the second video covered how to place different objects depending on the pixel color. Essentially we draw pixels in a texture and convert those pixels into objects when we load the level. That way we can easily create a lot of different interesting levels by simply drawing several images. So that was it for the month of September 2018. I hope you found the videos helpful and learned something along the way. If you have any questions regarding any of the videos, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.